Hello everyone. Today I am going to present to you my study entitled Anthology of Gubatnon Folk Songs. Folk song or the traditional folk music is considered to be the chief bearers of culture. The International Cultural Tourism Charter or the ECOMUS in 2002 restated that folk song as one of the key features of intangible cultural heritage expresses the way how the members of the community live. The way of life of these people are often expressed in folk song that is being passed down from generation to generation through families and other small social groups. Folk songs seem to live in oral tradition that is transmitted orally or orally. Therefore, it is learned through hearing rather than reading of words or music ordinarily in, in informal small social networks of relatives or friends rather than in institutions such as school or church. It is also associated with daily activities that are primarily rural in origin. This leads to the idea that folk songs are also a key of having an identity or cultural identity of a given community. With the facts stating the significance of cultural heritage in our lives, all the international and local organizations such as the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization or UNESCO and the Comus are doing all the means to support the preservation and conservation of these folk songs. The Philippine government sees the value of folk songs through the Republic Act No. 10066 that is also known as the National Cultural Heritage Act of 2009 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. It mandates that the national cultural heritage must be protected and conserved as well as the National Commission for Culture and the Arts or the NCCA and its affiliated cultural agencies and for other purposes must be strengthened. Also, it mandates the people of the Philippines to conserve, develop, promote, and popularize the nation's intangible cultural heritage such as oral traditions, languages, and expression. This is to preserve the identity of a community through folk songs that will always be remembered and sung over time. The curriculum framework of the music and arts education of the Department of Education in the Philippines states that the student must learn to hear, speak, and think in the medium of music. Simultaneously, growth and development in the skills that enable the application of the learner's knowledge should be encouraged through active involvement in the various musical processes. The Department of Education envisioned that music in the k program will effectively nurture and refine the learner's artistic expression and cultural literacy and celebrate his or her national heritage while it instills within every individual Filipino learner pride in his or her own cultural identity. Music education is indeed a great challenge in schools, especially to teachers and students. As a matter of fact, Gerard Jacinto, a research student of Hiroshima University, presented in his study the structure and current situation of formal music education in the K-12 curriculum in comparison with the basic education curriculum of 2002 in terms of time in the classroom and curricular structure, mode of language, instruction, and content. Accordingly, in his study, music education in the K-12 curriculum itself is still in the process of improving and adapting to these recent changes. The relationship between junior high school music education and senior high school music education in terms of its effect and trends to students needs further research in order to grasp the flow of the music education system of the new curriculum with this standard. From the facts stated, this study sought to answer the following questions. First, what gubatnan folk songs are available for teaching music and for cultural heritage appreciation? Second, what aspect of culture may be found in gubatnan folk songs in terms of lyrical content and melodic characteristics? And last, what are the classifications of gubatnan folk songs in terms of themes and functions? The culture and tradition of the Philippines was greatly influenced by the history that includes the way of life of people during the old times. Ang Municipalidad ng Gubat, or Bayan ng Gubat, is a municipality that lies within the province of Sorsogon in the Bicol region. Many of its inhabitants are migrants from the Visayas, such as Warais and Hiligaynon. Bicolanos, however, remain the dominant cultural group. Gubat is a first-class urban municipality in Sorsogon. It is divided into two districts, the North District and the South District. 
Gubat is pronounced with the accent of the second syllable. The people who live here speak the Gubat language, which is also a mix of Tagalog and Waray-Waray, a southern Sorsoganon sub-language, and they were called Gubatnons. According to Dr. Derry in 2015, migration is one constant feature of human history. Sorsogon and Visayas, as its neighboring island that was visible in its geographical location, were just two of the most influenced places by the Spanish colonization, as well as the major places of trade and industry. This is why Gubatnons are mixed with Visayan people. Gubat was made one of the major bases of the Spanish rule in the country and was also an alternate port for the Manila Galleon. Hence, it is an evident of a rich, varied, and distinct Gubatnon culture. The present study is anchored in the theories of Simon Fritt, the theory of music identity, and the music learning theory of Dr. Edwin Gordon. These two theories supported in claiming the importance of music in teaching and understanding music as well as in appreciation to one's culture. Fritz's theory states that the sound must somehow reflect or represent the people and how a person's experience in music reveals his or her origin as well as to explain why an idea or experience takes on the artistic or aesthetic form. Fritz emphasized that the issue is not how a particular piece of music or performance reflects the people, but how it produces them, how it creates and constructs an experience. A musical experience, an aesthetic experience, that we can only make sense of by taking on both subjective and a collective identity. On the other hand, the music learning theory of Dr. Edwin Gordon explains how people learn with music. Gordon's music learning theory is the relationship of how the experience of learning music is very similar to the experience of learning a language. When a man learns how to speak, read, and write, there are certain stages that he goes through before he can continue. The first year of man's life is spent listening to the sounds around, even though he does not understand what the sounds mean or what they are. Gordon believes that music is a language and thus should be taught as such. There are many similarities between language and music, including the process of learning a language, reading, and writing skills. These two main theories clearly speak how the experience and exposure of a person to music, particularly folk song, provides deeper as well as clearer understanding of one's own culture. Folk songs that are learned through experiences, either inside the house or in the community. Folk songs that are learned through learning a language provides every person a unique and distinct cultural identity. This study had gone through from the collection of folk songs until the making of the output. The researcher collected several Gubatnon folk songs from Gubat Sorsogon. These collected Gubatnon folk songs were evaluated according to the parameters of a folk song and was transcribed for the preservation of the cultural heritage. The collected and transcribed Gubatnon folk songs were analyzed according to the aspect of culture as represented in the lyrical content and its melodic characteristics. It was then classified according to its themes and functions. The Gubatnon culture was clearly presented in the lyrical content and its melodic characteristics. The classification of Gubatnon folk songs were based on its themes and functions as part of their daily lives. From the collected, transcribed, and analyzed folk songs, anthology of Gubatnon folk songs as the output of this study could be used for teaching music and for cultural heritage appreciation, especially in Gubat Sorsogon. The study employed a qualitative type of research which used the descriptive content analysis of Gubatnon folk songs. Purposive sampling was used to obtain the data. In-depth interview on some old fox from Gubat Sorsogon were conducted. The use of interview guide questions focused on the characteristics of Gubatnon's culture and the importance of folk song as well. The interview was administered to musicians who were born and raised in Gubat who practices oral tradition, the sources of the folk songs who prove the authenticity of the folk songs. The interview guide helped much in the gathering of data. The analysis of folk songs from each aspect of culture as well as its classification was analyzed through the frequency count measure. The Gubatnon folk songs were collected and evaluated based from the set parameters in choosing folk songs. The folk songs were analyzed based from the aspect of culture found in the lyrical content and melodic characteristics as well as in the classification in themes and functions. 
The collected Gubatnan folk songs were compiled and transcribed faithfully as to the preservation of Gubatnan intangible cultural heritage. A total of 24 Gubatnan folk songs were collected. Out of the 24 Gubatnan folk songs, 17 passed the given criteria set. These 17 Gubatnan folk songs were available for teaching music and for cultural heritage appreciation. The titles of the 17 Gubatnan folk songs are the following. Arogi Cristo, Ang Panyo, Ang Buskay, Ay Inday, Aba Adaw Neneng, Ang Kahoy ni Lulay, Ang Kinunot, Doon sa Iraya, Habo Ako Nin Kapanalian, Kahoy na Lansones, Kabidasong Luya, Kasusarong Banggi, Kahoy na Iba, Kundiri Pasana, Minatay na Ang Tikling, Turog na Ulod, and Sing Sing na Brilliante. These are the folk songs that pass the given criteria. A total of 17 unpublished and undocumented Gubatnan folk songs that reflect the culture of Gubat are available for teaching music, especially in grade 7 music class. These songs are the reflections of the life of people of Gubat, especially during the old times. The lyrical content of Gubatnan folk songs expresses about religiosity, four show about love and courtship, Seven shows about common characters and values of Gubatnons. One shows how Gubatnon foster discipline, three of which show how Gubatnon believes, and one shows about Gubatnon as a food lover. In the melodic characteristics, 11 of the folk songs were written in triple meter signature employing minor key, where four have the combination of conjunct and disjunct ascending descending melodic motion with its parallel major key at the middle. Six of the folk songs are in the ascending-descending conjunct melodic motion but with parallel major key at the middle. And one folk song is in ascending-descending disjunct melodic motion which has its parallel major key at the middle. On the other hand, three of the folk songs are written in triple meter signature employing minor mode where one is with the combination of ascending-descending conjunct and disjunct melodic motion and two are in ascending-descending conjunct melodic motion. Three of the folk songs were written in duple meter signature employing minor key where one of which has the combination of conjunct and disjunct ascending descending melodic motion and the other two are in conjunct melodic motion. The keys of the songs as well as its motion display gentleness and being passionate among gubatnons. Gubatnons are indeed loving, caring, diligent, patience, and other good character one must possess, and it was reflected by these folk songs. Most of the intervals are conjunct, that is why most of it are easy to remember and sing. That makes it more a folk song. The 17 Gubatnan folk songs were classified into different themes such as religiosity, character and values, culinary, about a suang, and the different feelings common to a person. Among the 17 Gubatnan folk song, one is used for praise and worship, eight for love and courtship, two for occupation, five represents different values among Gubatnons, and one signifies the existence of Aswang. It was concluded that a total of 17 unpublished and undocumented Gubatnon folk songs that reflect the culture of Gubat are available for teaching music, especially in grade 7 music class. There are different folk songs from Gubat Sorsogon that shows how lovable, valuable, food lovers, eager, persevering, hardworking, and religious Gubatnons were, as well as their belief on the existence of an evil spirit as part of the Filipino folklore. Most of the folk songs were often written in triple and duple meter signature as influenced by Visayan music, employing minor mode with the combination of ascending-descending, conjunct, and melodic motion which expresses gentleness and being passionate of Gubatnons. As expressed by the melodic characteristics, Gubatnon music was greatly influenced by Visayan music due to the migration of Visayan people, especially in Gubat, which was also ruled by the Spaniards. The Gubatnon folk songs can be classified into varied themes such as religiosity, character and values, decision-making, fostering good discipline, culinary, social status, and common feelings to every person. Moreover, Gubatnon folk songs are used for various purposes such as expression of feeling like love and grief, marriage, courtship, worship, 
occupation, and representation of different values of a person. It is hereby recommended that every place must be able to have an anthology of folk songs from their own place of origin. It is substantial because through this collection, people will have a clearer and deeper understanding of the way of life of people during the old times. It is also a way of preserving the cultural heritage. The Gubatnon Folk Songs should be given a special segment program in the local radio stations for the Gubatnon's generation of today to be familiarized the genuine quality of their very own folk songs. A big book of different folk songs may be developed that can be used for teaching the young ones, especially in teaching primary grades under the mother tongue-based multilingual education and for preserving cultural heritage. There are other aspects of culture such as beliefs, customs, arts, and etc. that were not yet worked on, which be a good topic for research. The simple melodies of a folk song make it easy to sing and remember. As supported by the Enhanced Philippine Basic Education Act of 2013, under the Republic Act 10533, folk songs must be taught in the school. Lastly, there are still other themes and functions of folk songs such as a lullaby, children's songs, serenade songs, different inspirational songs, and other which are not yet touched by a study. The following are some of the references used in this study. The researcher extends her deepest gratitude to the following major contributors of this study. That ends my presentation. Thank you very much for listening.